In today's video, I'm going to show you how I build leg rests in our asphalt late model. Let's get started. When leg rests are properly installed, your right leg is straight towards the gas pedal. Um, it's solid. It doesn't flex. It keeps a gap between the tin work, which is really hot, and your leg. Also on the left side, because this post right here, if this leg rest wasn't here and you got a side impact, it could potentially break your knee, hurt your leg, and ultimately it's just a lot safer. This is the final product. This is how they should look. In video two, I will show how to put the padding on it, how to wrap it in the Carbon X and make it clean and install them correctly. In video three, I will show how to build a knee knocker. So basically when you're oval track racing, your left leg gets shoved over and it really tears your knee up and creates a lot of leg pain. Your right leg has something to sit against. So building a knee knocker, giving your left leg something to lay against so it doesn't torque your knee over the whole time is actually a really nice feature and super comfortable long run. Building leg rests today off of this Kenny's Components carbon fiber seat. This seat has a molded seat insert. We did mold it ourselves. We haven't quite got it finished yet. We still have to finish sanding it and cover it. But I figure now is a good time to build our leg rests so that when I get to the point where I need to do the padding, I can do the padding and then wrap it with the same carbon X that we'd be putting on the seat cover. Insert. Go through all the steps on how to do this. First things first, we're going to start with our drawing. Everything I build, I start with a drawing. Here you can see where the seat's at. This has got the existing tin work, the dash bar, the foot box, and the rail. So I can go through, get all my measurements on here, draw it out here, and then build it out of car. So here is basically my rough shape of my design. You can see where I've got the seat. You can see how the shape of my leg rest is going to go. It's going to basically use the top of the rail. It's going to go down to the foot box. I'm planning on, I've got a break in this foot box here. I've got a small bend in it um, just because of the way it was designed. I'm hoping I could tie right into that. Basically with this leg rest, what I'm hoping to do is, is attach both ends of it and give it a place on the top where I can add my uh, brake bias adjuster. All right, my next step is to take my drawing, uh, my measurements that I have here. I grabbed a piece of cardboard that's, you know, roughly the rough shape. I use a lot of old cardboard. Cardboard is a great medium to work with. It's, I mean, it's garbage. It doesn't cost me anything to use it. There's a plethora of it. I always get new pieces of cardboard in when I get new parts. Um, it's easy to cut. It's easy to modify. You can tape it back together if you go too far. Ultimately, it's a really good way to, to build your templates that you're going to use. I don't have to waste a piece of aluminum, uh, you know, to try to, to try to get it to fit correctly. If I don't like my cardboard, I throw it away and I start over. Aluminum's expensive. It would, it would cost a lot of money every mistake that I made with aluminum. So I use a lot of cardboard. You'll see in a lot of my videos that I do a lot of stuff out of cardboard. It's, it's just because it's, uh, it's cheap. I have less waste and I'm going to throw it away anyway. So. Um, if I do come up with a, a design that I like, a lot of times I'll save the cardboard. I'll just put it in a box up on the shelf. Uh, the reason is there may be another place where that same template fits to build another part, be it, you know, a brake duct or a, an exhaust flare or, or you know, duct work parts. Uh, I just never throw them away. I just kind of throw them up on the shelf. Uh, unless it's like a one-off piece that I'm never going to use again, then, you know, there's no use to keep it. But uh, first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and line out my... Uh, my, my measurements on this cardboard, trim this up, and make myself a template. Now that I've got my template basically roughed out, I'm going to go ahead and cut this on my stomp shear, and this will give us a piece to start with, uh, at least something that we can put in there, start making our modifications to. Another nice thing about cardboard is you can write your notes right on it. So if you decide that, you know, I've got to put a, a bend here or a hem here, or I've got to cut it out here, you just write it right on there and you don't lose your notes. I keep a lot of uh, notebooks. I do everything in, in basically drawing form. I've got, um, I've just got a ton of these notebooks around my shop with different, uh, different sketches in it, different measurements, just different things. Um, just because I, I go through a lot of them and once you have them on there, you can keep them and get to revert back to your notes. Uh, it's really simple. but. Now we can take, we can trim this thing out and we can get ready for our next step. So we can already see that we're gonna to need to notch it down there so that we can get it to mount to the seat. 
Um, like I said before, most seats have an aluminum flange there that you can just rivet those or bolt those directly to. This does not have that, so we'll have to use the actual seat in between the insert and the, the, the carbon. We'll put that leg rest and we'll either bolt it or rivet it. Um, down towards the bottom, it's going to actually rivet directly to the side of the footbox. It's going to keep it from moving around. That way, when the driver's racing, it doesn't run the chance of getting in there, holding the throttle, uh, or just being an absolute nuisance. It will be really, really well attached. All right, you can see where I cut it out on the bottom here to get around the bottom flange of that seat. It's going to attach here at the top, so I left this piece here that goes behind the, the actual insert. Now what I've got to do is I've got to plan for my, my strip on the top where I'm going to have a bend. This will add some rigidity to the top to keep it from flexing, having a nice break across the top, and it'll mold into the bottom there. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it out where I want it, knowing that I've got enough room from the edge to allow for my top flange that I'm going to bend into it. So I'm going to lay it out, mark it all out, measure everything that I've got. But to start with, I know that I want a one inch wide top flange plus a half inch down vertical uh, edge so that it builds all the strength that I need. So what I'm going to take, I'll start with my edge scribe. So this is basically a tape measure with a needle on it so that I can set the width that I want. So if I want a half inch, I can set it at a half inch and I can scrape the edge and it'll leave my mark. So I'm going to start with my half inch, which is going to be my first vertical bend. This leaves a mark at one half inch. That's going to be my absolute first bend. My second bend will be at one inch in from this, so it'll be one and a half inches. So I'll set this at one and a half. And I'll put a mark on my pen. So now I've got my first bend at half inch and my second bend at one and a half. All right, now that I got my panel all trimmed out, you can see where I added a half inch along the bottom, the front side. This is where it will rivet to the foot box itself so it's good and secure. This is where I'm gonna bend my one inch flat for my strength for the top. This will have to be tapered because it will run into the foot box where these rivet. So this will have to be cut out. But this gives me my marks where I gotta make my bends. I gotta trim out the corner because you can't put two bends together without cutting that section out. This is where I'm going to rivet it to the seat. I cut this out with tin snips. I, I prefer to use the offset jaw tin snips. I have a set of greens for when I cut this direction. I have a set of reds when I cut that direction. You always put your waist to the lower jaw. This is where the junk goes. It will curl these corners up when you're tin snipping. So then I go back with my hammer. I tap all those back down so that it's smooth. I'll file that edge and clean it all up so it's nice and pretty. All right, we're ready to go ahead and start bending this. Um, I've got my corners filed down. I've got everything trimmed out. There's some edges here from my stomp shear where it left a little bit of a tight edge. This is called a whirly bird. It's got a blade on the end and it helps clean up these edges. It's a deburring tool, basically. So you just basically put it on the corner, give her a pull, and it scrapes off that sharp edge. This is a pretty cheap tool, but it'll save your fingers uh, if you can get lots of little slices in them. Sheet metal working, you can get lots of little slices. These here, a file, some sandpaper, it really helps try to clean those edges up. Plus, it doesn't, uh, doesn't make it sharp. All right, so here's our first one. You see it's got the bend on the top, which will help hold our brake bias adjuster. It's going to give it a ton of strength. We've also got a bend on the bottom, which will help beef up our, uh, our, our leg rest. And we've also got this flange on the front, which we will drill. And this will actually rivet to the actual foot box. So let's go see how it fits. All right, this is our fairly primitive design. It's our rough, uh, rough design, our rough outline. 
Uh, you can see how it goes right to the foot box. We'll be able to rivet it right there on that end. The seam's got a nice beef to it. We've got the, uh, the area for the brake bias adjuster to mount. And then we'll be able to rivet this or bolt this directly to our seat. That's going to be a good design. It's going to be a safe design. There's lots of surface area. Uh, now we can go ahead and get started on the next one. All right, now that we've got the first one done, we're ready to start on the second one. I'm going to use the exact same template that I used on that one because I know that the shape of it is going to mimic that side. This one I'll be able to shorten it quite a bit more just because of the design of the cage. But I'm going to start with the same template that I used on that side and then modify it to get it where I want for the second one. To get started on the second one, I went ahead and I put a strip of tape here knowing that that's where I'm going to want to end at. I don't need it to go much further than that because there's nothing there other than just flat steel. There's nothing there that's hot, there's no oil tank, there's no nothing. So it doesn't need to be like a heat shield. It's basically just got to come here so I can attach it so that it fills this area here and it makes it safe. If I didn't have it on an impact, this would hit my thigh, my knee may hit right here and it could potentially break. Depending Depending on how hard I got hit in the door. So to make this a smooth panel, I'm just going to take the same one from this side, set it up here, trim it to where I want it, get it to fit correctly, and then I just copy it on aluminum. All right, there we go. As you can see, it's uh, it's parallel with the bar there. We can attach it nicely. One of the issues that we may run into is that the seat on this actually kind of comes over at a little bit of an angle. Knowing that that bar is parallel and that this is angle, we will have to put a small break or a small bend um, kind of diagonally across this so that I can lay it up against the seat flat here and it doesn't have any sort of a twist. Once we get it in and it has this rib on the top, it's going to be really, really difficult to modify. So we will have to put a small bend in it. Let's go ahead and make this out of aluminum. Mark out where my brakes are, where my lines are, where I need to cut it still, do my trimming. I'm going to get it bent up, I'm going to test fit it, and then uh, we can come through and do all of our final prep, all of our final sanding, our, our, our edges, and make sure it's ready to go. We can pre-drill it. Um, and have it basically ready to install so we can send it to powder coat. We are ready to bend this. Make sure that when you set up your bend sequence, you go in an order that is feasible. If we were to go to bend this one first and put a 90 on it, there's no way we'd ever get our 90 on this one. So the small one here needs to be bent first. I'll put a 90 there, and then I've got to work this in. Because I don't have a removable jaw uh, brake or I don't have a magnet brake, I'm going to have to work this out. I'll have to go a little bit on this one, a little bit on this one. It will put a little bit of damage here, but it's nothing that I can't straighten out and fix. This front one, I will not put a bend on yet until I test fit it to make sure if I do need one or not, because that, the end of my foot box will be right through here. I'm probably going to wind up trimming some off of this whole corner to start with, but until I get to that point and I know I'm going to need to do some cutting, I'm going to build it just like I did the other one, and then I can do my trimming when I get a little further down the road. As of now, I'm going to start with these two bends because those are going to be the two hardest ones to get if I was to proceed further with this one. So these two first bends will be done, 90 degree, and then we'll, uh, then we'll work on the bottom one. Here is how your clamp piece should look. You can see right there on that edge is my scribe line. It's almost perfectly right along the edge of that. Now that my seam is aligned, I've got my arm tight here, I'm tight here, I'm ready to go ahead and put a bend in it. Don't go over 90, it's always easier to add than take away. So go a little bit, check it out. You might need to go just a little bit further. You may need to do it two or three times but it's better than trying to straighten out if you go too far. That looks really, really good there. Pull it out, double check your bend. I'm happy with that. I'm really happy with that. I'm ready to go on to my next one. All right, here we have it. We got our bend on it. I think we're ready to see how she fits. As you can see, we've got it in now. I'm pretty happy with the front where it's at. I'm happy with the height. I'm happy with the whole shape of it. We do have to put a break in here so that we can get the this angle uh, to the seat. Uh, we'll have to get that installed. Plus, I'm going to work on this end a little bit where it's going to bolt in. While I'm finishing cleaning up all my corners, I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill where it rivets to the chassis uh, to the foot box. To do this, I went ahead and I marked a line at one quarter inch with my edge thread. 
Then I put my tape measure down and I space my holes out evenly. This, this just makes things look a lot cleaner. Um, the attention to detail is big. When you start seeing rivets, there's, you know, there's a rivet there, there, there's a huge gap, another rivet, and then you have nothing towards the top. It just looks really unprofessional. And just to keep it clean, I like to space everything out. And it's got the, the gap against the edge, so I know that they're all in a straight line. After these holes are drilled, you'll see that they'll have a burr on them. To fix these, just grab an oversized drill bit, maybe a 7 16 half inch, and just by hand, you can just twist that back and forth a little bit. It cleans those off and gives you a nice clean edge. See the difference between them? That way when you run your finger over it, it doesn't cut you. And when you rivet it down, it doesn't space it up from the panel below it. Well, that's it. That's how easy it is to build a set of leg rests. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, and hit the notify button if you want to see uh, the new content that we've got coming out. I'm going to try to post videos often. I've got this stuff to do anyways. I might as well make a video and post it so you guys can learn from it. Uh, I truly support the DIY stuff. This Having guys do this kind of work is really expensive. If you can find the way to do it yourself, you're going to save a lot of time, a lot of money. Thanks for following. Hope to see you again. Thank you.